What is going on, Financial Movers? Today is September 28th, 2020, and we're almost done with the month of September for the entire trading month. Thank God, because it has been a difficult month. This is episode number 48, I believe. Yes, number 48 of the Financial Movers podcast. And today, I want to talk to you specifically about two things. And one is my absence from the podcast. I know I haven't been totally absent But I've definitely not been putting out as much content as I was in the past uh, from April when I started this all the way up until probably about three weeks ago. And the other thing I want to talk about is Peg Strategies and Trader Stewie. You probably clicked on this video if you're watching me on YouTube right now because uh, you saw the Trader Stewie logo in the thumbnail and I probably have something regarding Trader Stewie in my title. And it's because... I'm really going to move forward only trading like Trader Stewie. So let me touch on the first thing first before I go any further uh, about this podcast is that, or any further into this podcast, and that's that I've been releasing less content lately because the Financial Movers brand, the company, everything that I've been building, it's been growing at a dramatic rate, just increasing rapidly, uh, me expanding the business, getting more followers, getting more downloads, getting more views, everything like that. And uh, I, I just recently got my first employee that's been, you know, growing. It's been a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun, but it's been a lot for me to take on as a young entrepreneur. And I've been so boggled down with work that it's kind of been like, where do I want to take this podcast and what direction? You know, if you watch me on YouTube right now, then you know I'm making the educational videos just about everything that involves investing, trading, finance, etc. Then I've been also trying to record the podcast and put those up on YouTube. And I just didn't know the direction I wanted to take these podcasts in because I don't want to, I don't even know what I was thinking really. Like I don't want to mislead people into clicking on some type of clickbait and not realizing this is a podcast and, and, and whatnot. And then, you know, but then I just start thinking like, uh, I'm just here to make a podcast. (laughs) I don't know. It's pretty simple. You know, I shouldn't be changing anything because this has really been growing. The whole financial movers has been growing because I've been making this podcast and I I, I just don't think I should be changing a formula uh, of any type. So I'm just going to keep it the way it is. You know, I'm going to make the podcast and just publish it twice a week. I know maybe I even went a whole week without making a podcast and uh, it was just a lot of paralysis by analysis and I'm just going to stay on the same track that I was going on. And that also brings me that if you're watching me on YouTube, then I'm literally looking at you in the face right now. So you already know to hit that like button and subscribe button. If you're not watching me on YouTube, you're listening to me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, something like that, then you can watch this entire podcast on YouTube right now. And you'll see everything that I'm talking about. Uh, I do screen recording and go through all indicators, setups, strategies, etc. Uh, if you've been following me for a while, then you know that. And I would like to say, like I said, I've been getting a lot more downloads. I mean, I got over 3,000 downloads. Thanks to you all for downloading, watching me on YouTube, etc. cetera. Uh, I love it. I love it. I mean, 3,000 isn't a lot to some people, but it's definitely a lot more than what I started with when I started this podcast back in April, which was zero. So thanks a lot. Also, another thing that's kind of been stopping me from making these podcasts is that if you follow me religiously on Twitter and stuff, you know that it's been a tough month for me. Uh, July and August, I killed it. I did pretty well in July and August on my trades and stuff in September. I am literally red for the month in my trading. Uh, I think that's also been affecting me. This is, you know, trading is definitely a performance-based job. And having a negative performance has been affecting me in a negative way in terms of I don't know what to tell my viewers, talk to my, not tell my viewers, but talk to my listeners, talk to you, what should I say? And, and, you know, I've been failing. And then I start thinking like, hell, I need to get back to my roots. I literally started this podcast, not for you, but for me as more of a trade journal, but in audio format. And, and if you really started listening to me, I think I started this in March or April, I had no idea what in the hell I was doing. Uh, You know, I mean, this has been an incredible journey in terms of me learning stuff from indicators to sectors to industrials, everything. I mean, I've learned so much since I started this back in April. And I was, you know, I've been trading for the past couple of years, but not even really trading, more long-term investing kind of stuff. So trading has been a totally different type of road to go down. And, and, you know, I don't even care that I'm failing. Obviously, I care, but... uh, 
I'm like, I still need to make content. Like you're, you're listening to me for content, whether you're learning from me because I'm doing well, or you're learning from me because I'm doing bad. Either way, I need to make the content and I need to just get it out there for myself so I can look back on these, uh, you know, these are really memories being made for me. And so that also has been affecting me in the content I'm making, but I'm going to just keep making it, you know, whether I'm doing well, doing bad, I'm just going to keep making these podcasts. And I always try to have an exact day that I get these out. I don't know when that will be. I do know for a fact, I'm always going to get two out a week. Uh, probably on Monday and the other one will be on like Thursday or Friday, maybe even Saturday. I, I can't give an exact date. As I said, the business is growing a lot, so it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly when I'll get the podcast out. But do expect two in the future, always on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Uh, find me on any of those formats, platforms. All right, so the second thing, trading like Trader Stewie. The reason why you're listening to this or you watch this video on YouTube is because you're like, I want to trade like Trader Stewie. The guy is a trading legend. He's, he's a living trading legend. I mean, there's no better way to put it. So as I said, this month, I've been doing pretty poorly. I am beating the S&P 500, though. I've only lost $20 the entire month. So, you know, it's not bad. <laughs> um, I'm down less than 0.1%, while the S&P is definitely down a lot more than that. So it's not been a terrible month or anything. Unfortunately, I haven't been winning. But I, I've just been kind of going combing through my trade journal. I highly recommend anybody that doesn't use a trade journal to use one, make one. Anytime you trade, write why, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's a trade journal. Don't have to explain much more than that. But I've been combing through my trade journal like there's no tomorrow. What am I doing wrong? What was I doing right in the past two months? What am I doing wrong now? What should I fix? This has become a lot more difficult right now. And I finally realized uh, there was a lot of things I was neglecting, such as volume and price action. And that kind of took me down a road of doing a lot of research into volume and, uh, and, and price action. You know, uh, as you can imagine, I was like, well, I'm neglecting these two things. I need to do some more research on them. So uh, that took me down a road. And then I finally realized there's this guy I follow on, on Twitter, and his name's Trader Stewie. I mean, he's, he's basically a famous man in the, in the trading community. You've probably heard of him too, Trader Stewie. And I was like, this guy wins all the time. I mean, I'm sure he loses. Everybody loses. But he posts winning trade ideas time after time after time on Twitter. Uh, he's been making educational content for eight years using the exact same strategy for eight years. And I was like, maybe I should just start looking and seeing what Trader Stewie's doing. You know, I mean, I've seen other people who also say they've learned a lot just from Trader Stewie. So I was like, you know, I, I realized going through my trade journal, I'm trading all types of setups, all types of strategies, whether I'm trying to do gap and goes or buy on dips or peg place. I, I'm, I don't really have a real strategy. I'm trying to be a jack of all trades, master of none. And that's the exact opposite of what traders say to be in the market. They say, find your niche and trade it. Find that pattern that you trade all the time, look for and trade it. And I realized that's what Trader Stewie does. The guy just trades pegs, which are the power earning gaps. I'm, I've talked about these a lot in previous podcasts. Uh, that's all he does. He just trades pegs and he wins all the time. And so over the past week, I've been really busy with just kind of self-education. I, you know, anytime you become a trader, you're kind of a, a, a student of the market for life. But I was like, I'm going to go through as much educational material over the past week, week and a half from Trader Stewie that I can get my hands on. So I went to his website, theartoftrading.com, and uh, when I was there, I, I started watching his educational videos, and I found some videos on YouTube also, and all he does is trade peg plays. So I really just want to go over the peg strategy, and that's all I'm going to focus on for my trading career from here for at least a while. I want to start mastering this peg play because so many people are trading this exact same strategy, just like Trader Stewie, that I'm like, there's obviously a lot of good value to this. So what is the peg setup? Well, there's a video I definitely recommend you watching if you haven't already seen it. Um... It's called Swing Trading. It's a video by Keith Kern, which features Trader Stewie, but Trader Stewie primarily talks in the entire video. And so, like I said, the guy, Trader Stewie, he is a revered trader, and this entire podcast is going to be about peg plays. So, Trader Stewie in the video goes over how he finds his stocks, 
and and how he adds them to the watch list. So I'm going to just give you a watered down version of what he does, and then I will give you my setups, my my peg uh, uh, watch list right now, and and some stocks I'm watching using the same strategy that Trader Stewie uses. So in his video, he talks about being a better swing trader, and that's what I do is I swing trade. That's why you follow me. You like to swing trade. So step number one: create a watch list. Whether you're on uh, Trading View or stock charts, whatever, you need to create a watch list and title it, I don't know, Peg Plays or something, and start scanning. So he says, scan for anything that's over three dollars and trades over four hundred thousand shares. And then once you find stocks that have gapped up, which is the power earning gap, it's only stocks that. They report earnings and then they gap up, maybe a percent, two percent, doesn't matter, but they gap up and they can hold the gap. He says, whenever the stock gaps up, you need to watch for those stocks to make some type of pattern. And he says 10 of them. He says, pennants, hammer, hammer candle, falling wedge, inside days, bull flags, symmetrical triangle, holy grail setup, cup and handle, or a 2B reversal. And he says the stock should gap up on big volume and then form a pattern. When sellers sell the volume, whenever sellers sell after the gap, it should be on low volume and it should never start to close the gap from the peg. Okay, so I'm going to give you examples of the same setups that he's talking about. Uh, but I noticed that some of them are more popular than others. So I noticed, for example, the pennants the, is, is one of the most popular patterns you see after a peg. Same with the hammer candle, the falling wedge, and inside days. Also, the holy grail setup. Uh, so I'm going to give you four examples of exactly what he's talking about. And it's crazy because in a lot of these setups, you'll see many of these patterns in that one grab. Like you in, um, I forget the name, uh, Quanex Building Products, ticker symbol NX, the first example I'm going to give you. So it gapped up, which is a peg play on earnings. That's why it's called a power earnings gap. It gapped up from $17.27, $17.20, all the way up to $18.28. And then it created a pennant. So it creates this pennant. It's riding on the 20-day moving average. And just over the past last week, it kept getting tighter and tighter in consolidation in the pennant. And it hit the end of its pennant. And you can also see whenever, it, if you go to the graph, you watch this video on the YouTube, you can see that it had incredible volume whenever this thing pegged up. So it pegged up on big volume, rode inside this pennant, all the way through and then at the end of the trading session this past friday it made an inside candle so i said that he has a lot of uh, qualities that he wants to see different criteria he wants to see trader stewie wants to see whenever he sees a peg play whether it's pennants hammer candles inside days whatever and it's crazy because in this pennant at the end of the pennant there was an inside day candle and what an inside day candle is is so on thursday the, the stock trades within a range. Let's say it trades uh, $18, between $18 and $17. And then on Friday, if the next day, the ticker symbol or uh, the candlestick for the following day can trade inside that range. So on Thursday, if it trades between $18 and $17. And then on Friday, it trades only between $17.90 and and, uh, and $17.20. Then that's, and then it closes like that. That's an inside day candle. So this Quanex building products gapped up on the 3rd of September. So this is taking has taken almost a month to form. But you have to have a lot of patience for these peg plays, right? So it's taken almost a month to form this pennant. And then on the 18th of September, it got another big volume spike, but the price still traded inside of its pennant. And then on Friday, at the very end of the pennant, this is no coincidence, at the very end of the pennant, it did an inside day candle from Thursday to the Friday. It traded in a smaller range 
on Friday than it did on Thursday. And then today it gapped up. So it gapped up from 1794 to it opened today at 1821. And it's currently trading at 1866 at a 4% increase from last Friday. This is what peg plays are. And this is how he consistently wins all the time. Trader Stewie has become a master of the peg plays. This is what he does. It, he, he has found his craft in the market his setups, and that's all he trades. I mean, I'm sure he trades some other things too, but this is all he markets himself on are peg plays. And I don't think this guy is a fruru in the market who just tries to act like he knows a lot, but he really doesn't. I really believe that Trader Stewie is a living legend that is sharing trade ideas day in and day out. Make sure to follow him at Trader Stewie on Twitter. Uh, I don't know if he has any other social media, but definitely on Twitter. So, Quanex building products, man, this thing is still in play. It just broke out of its pennant. It also looks to be setting up as a holy grail. If you know what a holy grail is, if you don't, I'll tell you, it's whenever it uses its 20-day moving average and just never falls below it. So this thing is setting up to be a holy grail also, uh, which is something else. So it's it's actually meeting three of the cri three of the ten criteria that Trader Stewie has on his list. He it meets the pennant play, it meets the inside day. And it also is a holy grail setup. So another one, hammer candle. After a peg, Trader Stewie says he likes to see a hammer candle as a criteria. So one example is ticker symbol PWR for Quanta Services. This stock gapped up on the 7th of August, gapped up big on huge volume, just like he says that he likes to see. And then the next day, it not only was an inside candle, there was an inside candle on the 10th of August or the 7th of August, but it was also a hammer candle. So the hammer candle, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It looks like a freaking hammer, right? It has a big body at the top and then it has a leg that comes down off the top of it that literally looks like a green hammer. And why do they call it a hammer? Because it is about to smash the floor and take the price higher. And that's exactly what it did. So look at this. Or, or listen, I don't know, I say look at this because I know I'm making this video for YouTube, so I'm sorry if you're not watching this, but it closed the day at $46.37, the day after it pegged up on a hammer candle, and then it rode the price all the way up to $50. I mean, how much of a percent increase is that here? I'm calculating it right now. This stock ended up going up in two days, 7.47% on an insight after it pegged up on big volume, and then it had a hammer, and then it got more big volume, right? So this is exactly what Trader Stewie is looking for. This is exactly what all of us should be looking for in our trades if we want to trade like Stewie. And notice, on if you go and look at it on the chart, it has a big volume all the time. So on the 10th of August, on the 11th of August, on the 18th of August, for no reason. I mean, it gapped up. On the peg play, even on the 23rd of August, or September, so just last week, it gapped up on doing its peg, moved up big, and it keeps getting big volume. And what is that big volume trader? Stewie says that that is hedge funds, institutions, people with big money that are literally stomping in on this stock with big money and buying it up because they are elephants in the market and we aren't. But we want to be with the elephants. I mean, that's almost word for word what he says. It's not exactly what his quote is, but he uses some type of uh, example with elephants. But this is what he says, is that you want to follow the institutional money because they know something that we don't know. And if we keep seeing big volume in Quanta Services or any other stock that does these peg plays, that's the stocks that we want to be in, all right? And right now, Qantas Services just broke out of another pennant, and it's riding the 20-day moving average. So watch for this one right now again, PWR, Qantas Services, all right? So it, it gave a green hammer and an inside day and rode higher, and now it just broke out of another pennant. Trade like Trader Stewie. This is what he's doing, okay? So the inside days, there's another example I have, ticker symbol MOS, and that is for Mosaic Company, right? Ticker symbol MOS. And this stock also gapped up on the 4th of August after doing a peg play, power earning gap. It reported 
on the 3rd of August, gapped up on the 4th of August big. And when I say gapped up big, I mean this thing gapped up 9% overnight and then went to ride higher. And then it gapped up again the next day on the 5th of August. But the beautiful thing was, was it formed another inside candle and it did exactly what Stewie says that it should do. But it formed an inside candle on a sell-off. But then it sold off on low volume. So as he said, whenever it sells off after pegging, you want low volume. And then after that, the next day it rocketed. Actually, for the next two days it rocketed. So it closed at 16.12 and then went up to test all the way at $18.43, which was a 14.17% gain in two days. Trade like Trader Stewie. This is what I'm doing. I am focusing on peg setups and that, and that's it. I'm not trading anything else anymore. You know, I'm tired of getting just sporadic results and never really feeling like I have a 100% strategy, but now I feel like I do have a 100% kind of strategy. I, I'm going to follow his his recommendations. I see this guy win time and time again. You know, there's this, uh, there's this quote from Socrates, and it says that, Smart people learn from other smart people. Average people learn from their own mistakes, and dumb people already know everything. Well, I was learning from my own mistakes, and I was doing okay, right? Like, I was looking at my trade journal, learning from my own mistakes, trying to figure it out on my own. But then I just said, like, why am I not just learning from a smart person? And Trader Stewie is a smart person. That is why I just want to trade like Trader Stewie. So one last one that you should be checking out in the market right now is another peg play, Target. And ticker symbol TGT, Target gapped up big on the 19th of August. It reported its earnings and ended up gapping up 8.55% uh, in one day. It then went on to make all-time highs at $156. And today, it's actually breaking through its all-time high at $157. But on the example of what Trader Stewie talks about is after it made its all-time high, you don't want to just rush in there and buy it that day after. You want to see one of these patterns being made that he talks about. And so you can see the pattern being made on the chart on Target. After it made a new all-time high, it then made a falling wedge pattern. So the falling wedge is whenever a stock goes up bullishly and then it starts to fall back down and the target falls down, makes this wedge pattern where it trades in between support and resistance, waits for the 20 day to come give it support and then it goes higher. So it waited for that 20 day to come give it support, broke out of the wedge pattern on the 11th of September at $146 and now it's trading at $157 as it just rode that 20 day support up. So ideally, if you're watching this target, go and going forward i wouldn't want to just buy it as it breaks out of this all-time high because now it is trading far away from its 20-day moving average once again i mean right now it's at 157 so it's trading at that five percent away from its um from its 20-day moving average which it likes to use that 20-day as support you can see this as an example all the way from uh, april i mean this thing's been riding 20-day support all the way from april it likes to hug it so now it's trading 5% away from 20-day support. I wouldn't want to jump in it quite yet. But what I would like to see is another type of falling wedge being formed like the one from before. That would be nice. And then as it, the, as it waits and trades between support and resistance areas in the falling wedge, I'd like to see the 20-day come give it support. Or if it doesn't do a falling wedge pattern, I would like to see most likely, I mean, these are the type of things that I see time and time again on his examples I would like to see a uh, pennant being made. So the pennant example is also where it type trades in a type of triangle. So these are the type of patterns that I want to see. If you would like to see a full list of everything I'm watching right now, then be sure to fit, uh, 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 visit the, I can't talk, uh, 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 be sure to visit the Financial Movers website and I'll have a photo of every single one of these stocks that I'm following right now. On, these peg, on this peg watch list and start using a scanner. Like I said, be sure to watch that video on YouTube, the one I've watched recently, I've watched a lot, but th this one is probably the most informative, the one with him and Keith Kern. And if you like what Keith Kern's doing, then also maybe, I don't know, form some type of strategy like Keith Kern. But 
I would like to remind you that none of this is financial or investment advice. This is just what I'm doing in the market. It's good to be back, people. I've missed you. I've missed the podcast, and this feels very natural. I will see you next podcast this sometime this week. Have a good week, and trade like Trader Stewie. Bye.